So as you know already, uh, strings are uh, A group of uh, no characters is called one string, and uh, that a group of characters uh, it can be a sentence also it can be two it can be more than one also. Okay, so. So the string class is uh, immutable class. It is available in uh, basically in the Java dot lang package. You already know that, and uh, it is a immutable class. What is mean by immutability? So immutability means change the value. So it cannot be changed. So change it. It cannot be changed. So that's the immutability means. So what is this uh, no, immutability? So when you create a uh, any new string and you are trying to modify the string, it will create a new new object in the memory, but not going to change the same string. Same string cannot be modified. The string will know, uh, it cannot be changed basically. The value cannot be changed. So that's uh, this immutability means. And uh, how this, uh, String class is implemented. And can we create a modifiable strings? Yes, you can create a modifiable strings with a string buffer and string builder classes. String buffer and string builder classes will help you to create the mutable strings. Mutable strings means uh, modifiable strings. You can uh, create them. And uh, the string is uh, basically uh, implementing the, these are the three interfaces it is implementing. So what are the three interfaces? Uh, let's see that. One is a serializable, comparable, and char sequence interfaces. So basically class implements the interfaces, right? That again, I'm repeating the one more time interface concept. So interface, all the interfaces, those are implemented in the class. So that, that's what we are doing here. And uh, this char sequence interface means, basically a sequence of characters is called a char sequence interface, it will represent. And also, This char sequence interface is implemented by these three classes, string class, string builder class, and string buffer class. And what is the difference we'll come to know between a string, string buffer, string builder, these differences you will come to know in the upcoming classes. Uh, basically, uh, this is the, uh, three types of classes to create the strings. So you can use any one of them. So you can use any one of them. And uh, so to understand that, So let's go into one by one. What is the first string? How can you create a string? How can you create a string object? 
So a string object can be created using a string literal or using a new keyword. Any one of them you can use. So string literal. So there are two ways to create a string. One is a literal and using new keyword. So string literal means you already know. String literal is a, you enclose the any value in double quotations, the string value. See here, from SQ automation platform. It is enclosed in double quotes. This is called string literal. So this is stored in one variable that is string literal variable. So each time you create a string literal, JVM is going to check in the string constant pool special memory. There, this string literal will go and store. So that memory it will check. So you are creating one more. For example, new string S1 equal to Java Selenium you created. First, the Java Selenium will go and check in the string constant pool special memory, whether that is there in the memory or not. If it is not there, new memory will create. So if it is there and it won't create a new memory. So that's the you know, check point is there. So it checks and also you can uh, so move on to the next. If it is there, don't create. If it is not there, create a memory. That means it saves the memory. Basically, that's what it is happening. It saves the memory. So that's the main object of this uh, you know, a string literal. String literal is more efficient than string uh, object with the new keyword. Yes. So you will come to know. I'll, I'm going to explain when new keyword use for creating object for strings. It will be more memory occupies, and uh, no, that's the reason. See, if you write a string s1 equal to welcome, string s equal to welcome, and you see this, both references pointing to same memory. This is the string uh, constant full memory. And uh, this one is a heap memory. Outer layer is the right, outer uh, one, that is a string. So heap area, and below one is a, below one is a, So this one, this round one below one is, this is the constant pool memory. For a string literals only, this will be created. For a string literals only, that will be created. And that's the, this string literal means, string constant pool. Where string literals will store? In the string constant pool memory. Where this is string constant pool is available? Heap memory Heap inside. Memory. That is a special memory for the string literals. That's a special memory for the string literals. So that is the main concept of uh, no, uh, string literals. And uh, string literals, is more efficient than uh, creating object with a new keyword. Why string literals are more uh, uh, no, useful and more efficient? Because so string objects are stored in special memory area that is a string constant pool. So to make Java more memory efficient, people mostly use a string literal concept. So that's the main reason for uh, using the string uh, no, literal concepts. And uh, so second one, how can you create object with a string, object with a new keyword? So you know how to create object for the class? How to create object for a class? Class name, mm -hmm. 
Reference equal to new class. New. Right now, for a string is a class, right? So it will create. So one string, of them. String is equal to new. String. Yeah. Parameter. New string. New so string. that's the. So you can give a value here. Now see here. Uh, can you observe here? String str object equal to new string. And within parentheses, you're giving a double quotes inside a Java. Now, can you tell me how many objects are going to create in this line? Hmm? Two, sir. Two, Two objects. Yeah, right. You're right. Absolutely. Two objects it is going to create. So two objects it is going to create. What is the reason for two objects creation is one is going to store in the Keep it. Keep it. memory. Keep memory. Yeah. And another one is constant. Constant. Constant pool memory. So that is the main reason why it is creating a two objects. Two objects. So two objects it is going to create. Two objects it is going to create. So that's why. So the two objects, that's why you, many people won't use this, this concept. So this, this, um, this concept, that's the main reason. One is this will go and store in the constant pool, but this entire thing will go store in the heap memory. So that's why it is not effective, right? Unnecessary waste of uh, no, memory usage. That's why people won't use this uh, new keyword for creating objects for strings. Generally people will use uh, string literals only. So, what is string literal and what is That's string right. constant? So, what is meant by this both? String literal means I already told. What is meant by string literal? How you can define? Closed with the double quotation. So, yeah. So, you enclose in the double quotation well uh, any value that's going to be string literal. So, literal. What is string constant pool? So string constant pool basically which no uh, stores the data in the special memory. The string literal value will go and store in the special, special memory. memory. That special memory is called this string constant string constant pool memory. So that's the main reason why so string constant pool uh, so the data will store for uh, literals. The reason is so if you enclose in double quotes that's uh, treated as a string literal, the literals there is a special memory that special memory will be reused. So for storing the data and uh, So this string constant pool, that's how it will store. Okay. So first it will, whenever you're creating a string object, if it is a string literal is there, it will go and check in the string constant pool first. If it is there and uh, no, it won't create the memory. If it is not there, it will create the memory. So that's the main object of, so it will save the memory, right? With the new keyword that, that doesn't happen. Automatically, two objects will create. It doesn't matter. Okay, so the two objects will create automatically. That's the problem here with the string. String with the object and string with the literal mm -hmm. concept and string constant pool. Mm -hmm. So uh, thing. Okay, so what is the difference between string literal and string object? So if you observe here, so if the two references are having same value and only one object will be created in the string constant board, it won't create another object. So 
that's the one advantage with the string constant code. So if you created two di different references, for example, with a new keyword, string S1 equal to new string Java, string S2 equal to new Java, both memories are different. Both memories are yeah. different. So that's the reason uh, you have to, so you have to be very careful to which one you want to choose. So you have to be very careful while choosing that. While choosing, you have to be very careful there. And uh, no, that's why it's a waste of memory. This is the another one memory, this is the another memory. But here, two references pointing to same memory address. Same memory mm -hmm. address. So that's the main concept here. And uh, so here is the examples if you see here, string A equal to Java, string B equal to Java. So these two are literals, right? Then if you do A double equal to, so double equal to what it will do? Compares. Compares. Compares what? Give uh, reference value both. Compares. Value. Reference values will be compared. Reference values will be compared. That reference value will be so going to compare and uh, not the content. Okay, not the content. Please understand that. So content okay. is not going to be. So and uh, that's why you will get a okay. two here answer. So this object address and this object reference both both is pointing to same memory. Both are pointing to same memory. So that is the reason. So they will uh, know this memory address is same, this memory address is same. That's why you're getting it true. So here are two different objects like you no know, string C equal to new string Java, string D equal to new string Java. Now C double equal to D if you do. So why you are getting a false there? Hmm? Because different, memory. Memory. Different, memory. different memory. Two memories. Different memory. So different memory. That is the reason you know, you're getting that. It's a different memory. So overall different memory. That is the reason you're getting that thing. Okay. So these are our interview questions, okay? Please make sure. Double equal to always compare the numbers. So please keep this point in mind. Now, can you see here? String E equal to JDK. String F equal to new string JDK. Now, E double equal to F. So now what is the no? answer? Why it is false? Can anyone tell me what is the reason for false? Why it is false? This is also two memory locations. Yeah, right? The first E is in the string constant for memory. F is in the where? F will store where? In the constant pool. Constant, constant pool. So why F will store in the constant pool? Keep, keep pairing. Keep right. Yeah. You are using what here? New keyword. New keyword. Ah. So F will refer the heap 
reference mm -hmm. object. Mm -hmm. So automatically again this JDK will go and store them in the constant form. Only literal. Why literal? I am saying this JDK is enclosed in the double quotes. Double quotes. Huh. So that's the reason. Okay. Okay. So these are the some of the important interview questions. Please make sure you remember them. Okay. Otherwise, it's a difficult to answer them. Simple questions they will give. So that simple questions we should not miss. So obviously. No, uh, even though it's a simple, but many people are uh, no, misunderstood them. Mm -hmm. The object memory address and uh, how it will store. If you don't know that and this kind of you no know, troubles, we will get it. So take care of them and it will be easy for you guys. Okay. So that's all about strings and let's go and see the what are the string methods are there. Main important concept is you need to understand string methods. What are the different string methods are there? So you need to understand a lot of methods are there. Every method returns a value. You should know this. Every string method returns a value. Every string method returns a value. That means how can you call a return type methods? One class return type methods. Data type variable type variable name. What mm. to type non no. Yeah, But the object reference you are missing. Mean without object reference you cannot. Object call. reference dot uh, static method yeah. or non so Object reference is so, mandatory. Without object reference are not possible at all to call the non-static methods. So that. We should know that. That's a very important. So you are keep on forgetting these those things. Make sure you know you are remembering those points. So let's go and understand the string methods. Most of the web pages are going to have string methods only. Every web page, it is a string, string data you will have in the web pages. That data, if you want to handle with the data and also you want to format the data, you want to you know, take you know, in your own format, uh, in your own requirement, if it has to meet, you have to apply the string methods. String methods apply, uh, no, it's a mandatory. So very, very important. Okay, so make sure so that is uh, you know, followed. Any other questions? No, sir. Okay. So let's go and you know, uh, target our next one is um, you need to understand the methods one by one. So first one is length method. Length method is a, it's going to find out number of characters in your where? String. So in the given string. In the given string, it will return how many? One minute. So um, the caret method, we already you know I have introduced this caret method. So caret method basically it returns the character at a given index. At a given index, it will return the character for you.
So you have to call string object dot caret method and you have to write a return type, char, char data type. So that's a mandatory. So next one is uh, substring. Substring is another method, basically which, you know, uh, basically substring means it's a portion of string. So you can give a portion of string and which is really, you know, a partial string in the main string. So partial string in the main string, you can take it up. And that to get that substring, you have a two kind of methods here, overloaded methods. You can take any overloaded methods. That overloaded methods basically, the overloaded methods, it will help you. You can remember easily, right? You can remember easily. And also different parameters. You can give different parameters. That parameters will, parameters will help you. So to get the required data. Otherwise, it led, directly let's go and we don't want to waste time there. One by one, instead of explaining, I'll write a direct functions here. So string handling, I can sort of create a package, string handling programs. So, oh, oops, we have already here, that this one, right? But otherwise, uh, let me show this here I'll create. And then I'll just copy. So many programs are here. String methods demo. So this is the one we want. Okay. Let's go. First one. Length method. So I already know that. So I had declared one variable uh, string s equal to Java. So it starts with a zero index, then one, then two, three, like that. The each index number you are going to give that. So each index number you are giving that index number. So you are going to check that and whether that is uh, so having the, how many characters are there in the given string that you can find out with uh, this length method. So length method is going to give how many characters, number of characters are there in the given string. So that is the main objective of this length method. You can see, you can call the return type, you see, data type is uh, integer. The method returns an integer. So variable name equal to string object dot the non-static return type method. You are calling non-static return type method. So system dot out dot print ln. So length is this one. So then caret method. So int index fetches the character at a given index, returns character type data. So data type is char. So variable name, string object dot caret method. So you, I'm fetching the second character. What is the second index uh, character? V. V. So the second index character? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm? One to V. V, right? You see here. We don't want to. First, always first character will be in the zero index. 
first character will be zero. always in the zero index. Then left to right, you have to move and give the index numbers. Then you can easily understand. So left to right and give then so second index means V is there. V it will store and you can print it. That's a caret method. The widely used method, this one. So please remember this. And next, two care array, another one. To solve any problems, you need a caret method, length method, this two care array method. These are the methods you will use widely. So we are going to use widely all these methods. So make sure uh, you understand these uh, methods one by one. Without this practice, it's uh, difficult to remember these methods. Please practice, uh, no, uh, spend some time on this uh, string handling and the next topic of uh, collections. Collections is another very important topic. And uh, so many people, you know, when it comes to last, uh, they will ignore. That's a problem there. So don't ignore, okay? If you ignore, you cannot uh, know, remember the concepts. Practice more, then that really helps you. This is the one, one so, uh, so one thing that is most important one. Okay, any questions? No, no questions? Okay, then let's move on to the next one. Two care array basically what it does is convert the string into character array. The written type of this method is character array. So it returns a character array. So it returns a character array and uh, see the written type character array ch equal to s dot two char array method. So then in this array, so now it is all combined characters here in the string, but still this, this doesn't change. Now it will be converted into array character array. This is the array, right? So mm -hmm. each element, each character is one element in the array. So then you can, uh, how can you iterate the array? For, for each. For each. for each loop or for loop you can use. Mm -hmm. So any one you can use. So I'm using for each loop. For, so data type of this array is uh, char array. And uh, to this one colon ch. So this uh, array name, system.out.print. This one. So system dot out dot print ln. So you take the so this and then next one concat method. So what is concat method? Concat method will help you joining to combine two strings or connecting. <laughs> yeah. So joining two strings and return the New string. new string object. So here is the one written type string s1 equal to old string dot concat the new word, new string word I am giving. New string word I am giving. So that will, uh, no, which will concat. Now, what is the s value? Java. Java. And uh, And uh, selenium, what is the output you will get? Java selenium. Java selenium, you will get it. So that will store in the S1. S1. So string S1, uh, now you will get S1 is going to have Java selenium in lower case. That is the one. 
Next method, two uppercase method. So the two uppercase method, what it will do is, it is going to convert the given string into uppercase letters. So in your string, each letter will be converted into uppercase letter. If it is a lowercase, if it is not a lowercase, then no, no, it won't touch. So this also returns a string type data. So I told you every method is a return type method. So there is no wide methods in the string class. And uh, the return type is a string s2 equal to s1 dot two uppercase. You are converting the s1 into uppercase format. That means st is going to have what kind of data? All uppercase letters it's going to have. Then I am printing that s1 is converted into uppercase, then s2 value is this one. Next one, two lowercase. So two lowercase, what it will do? It will convert the lowercase letters into lowercase. Lower so this also returns a string type data. So return type of the method, variable name equal to which one you want to convert to lowercase. So I want to convert S2 into lowercase, then I can so proceed further on that. Okay. okay. Can we particularly uh, select a letter here and convert it into lower or uppercase? You have to loop it. Okay. Loop and figure, you know, in the loop inside, mm -hmm. use the condition, which one you want to convert, which one you don't want to convert. Thank you. The loop is loop inside. You have to use the if condition, okay. mandate. Okay. Yeah. So otherwise, there is a, another concept. I'll explain you in one of our programs. Mm -hmm. So you know ASCII quotes and uh, their uh, characters, right? The, mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. you can use that also. Okay. But uh, you have to use uh, so different concept. I'll show you that how to convert. Uh, so upper to lower, lower to upper. You need to do one program is there. That program I'll tell you. Okay. There it will uh, it will cover your uh, you know. So concept. Next is empty method. Is empty method will return whether the given string is empty or not. So if it is empty, returns a true. If it is not empty, returns false. So so it's a very important in the no checking uh, in the if condition. All these boolean commands, boolean methods you will use in the if conditions. While writing the code, this is these are the things widely used. If a string is empty, you should not do any action. So that uh, time this will be very helpful. String boolean b equal to s dot is empty. So whether that is empty or not, you can check it. And uh, next one is so is blank. Six whether the given string is blank or not written say boolean value. Okay, so we we will see that uh, no whether it is a blank or you no know, empty or not. What is the difference between both of them? So is blank, is empty. So what is the difference? Empty means you don't have any value. Mm -hmm. Blank means you are just giving a space is also a blank, right? So like that, you can find out whether your string is having a values or not. You can find out. So that's the this. So 
So any questions on this before you know, going for the next uh, thing? All Boolean commands are there. E is empty, E is blank. Next one is contains method. Uh, so if there is blank, uh, if there is space, empty method will return false. Right? And blank. So is, is empty, blank means basically you have a spaces. Yeah, it, it returns false. Yeah, empty right. is empty will return false. Yeah, yeah. Because there is a some characters, right? Spaces also. Okay. Is blank will return true. Okay. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So if there uh, is a space in between, letters even it returns uh, false. No, no, no. It won't consider in the letters. It means it is okay. there. It's not at all blank, right? Okay. So, so blank means completely. Okay. So I, I didn't understood uh, understand that concept actually. The empty and blank. So empty means you are not giving a suggest, you know, null something okay. that, that's empty. So uh -huh. blank means you can just give. So no spaces like this. Let this string is oh. equal to this the blank. Oh, got it. Okay. Understood. So that's a blank. Okay. Thank you. Next. Contains method. So it just checks whether the uh, so given value is uh, blank, you know, contains the given partial string or not in the main string. So in the main string, so it is going to have or not, it will check. That's the uh, this. Uh, so contains very useful command. So widely used one. Okay, this one also very widely used one. So please, you know, focus on this uh, also. So then we have a uh, another one. Equals method. So equals method is a very important one. So what is the equals method? So equal, it will compare the, okay, it will compare the two given strings. So that's this equals method will to help you. And whether both the string content, so both the strings are same or not, it will check. Basically, the lower case, upper case also, it will check exactly it's the same or not. If anything is not same, it will return false. So there's a Boolean value again. Okay, It's all written as Boolean values. And uh, so which Object class method is overridden in the string class. Overriding, method overriding. So which object class method is overridden in the string class? Equal. Equals method. So equals method is overridden in the so string class. So basically overriding means what? That's a object class is the parent class, right? So object class is the parent class. So that parent class, so parent class method, you are overriding in the child class. That is equals method. It's already equals method is there in the object class. So that method you are overriding in the, so already done. You don't need to do that. Already done in the, so Java code itself they are doing. So Java code itself, they are doing that. And uh, that's one of the very important one. You can see equals. See the data type is object class 
then parameter. So this equals method, when it comes to string class, this will compare the two strings. But when it comes to object class, the equals method will compare any two objects. That's a difference, right? I told you the method overriding, you know, structure, how it will be. Two classes, method names are same. Parameters also same. Everything same. But what is the change? Logic. So the logic what you build is a different. That is the main concept of this uh, no, method of overriding that we are covering here. So boolean b4 equal to s1 dot equals s2. So s1 is all lower case, s2 is all upper case. So will it return true or false here? B4 is equal to s1 dot. It returns false. Returns false. false. Yeah, if you give it yeah. ignore case, it will return false. So no, right? It won't happen. Equals means it exactly it will compare. Mm -hmm. no, Why you if we give a ignore case, we will it will return false. Ah, that is different. That is I'll come to that. Okay. First equals you know false. So yeah. Explore on the equals method. So basically, if you so take the equals, uh, no, that will exactly compare. So both the strings are same or not. If not same, for example, this lower case one letter, this is upper case one letter, then it will return false automatically. Because it's not same, right? That is the reason. So it's not same, so it will return false. There is one more equals ignore case method. See, ignore case. So upper or lower case, just ignore it. And I just compare both letters are same or not. That's a equals ignore case method means. So Boolean B6 equal to S1 dot equals ignore case S2. Here you will get a equals method will give you false. false. Okay. But here it will give you true. That's true. True. true because it will ignore the cases and compare same letter or not. So that is the main concept of this equals ignore case. Next is starts with starts with the function. So it, it checks the given string is starting with this uh, prefix or not. Prefix suffix. So how many of you know prefix and suffix difference? Uh, prefix is before and suffix will be later, later of the... Word. Exactly. So that's it. Good. So, prefix is just before. Suffix is after. So that, you uh, know, it will, you uh, know, uh, this is starting with this prefix or not. So in the given string, this prefix is starting or that contains the starting part or not, it will check. That is the this uh, uh, starts with whether your string is starting with the given string or not, given substring or not, it will check. So that's the main object of you know uh, this. Next ends with, there is a ends with. So ends with basically it will check uh, whether this given suffix is ending with this string or not. So you, if you observe here, what is the S1 value? Java. Java selenium, right? Yes. Java, Java, Java selenium, right? Java selenium. So Java selenium is ending with selenium or not? Yeah. So that's why you will get a true. True. You will get a true there. So that's the main uh, concept of uh, no, how you will uh, find out whether it is true or 
falls with uh, starts with and ends with i have already used so in the previous uh, no file handling how many of you remember that i do sir so this morning only you covered it again A file handling class you had in the morning, sir? Yeah, this mm -hmm. morning. Yeah, yeah file handling I had in this morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that program, so we completed that. Okay. All right. That there also I explained this ends with and uh, no, uh, ending with the file dot txt or dot xls which file you want you can filter it in the loop. So that's the ending part will be taken care. That's one and most important one split method. So what this split method will do? Split the split the string. Hmm? Split the letters. You split the string based on a delimiter. Based on the delimiter. Given delimiter based, it will split it. So it will split it. So based on the delimiter, it will split it. Okay. Okay, so the next one is is this the very important? Okay, make sure you understand split. You have to give it delimiter. What is the delimiter? Delimiter can be spaces, a comma, question mark, colon. It can be anything, right? It's, how do you recognize that? The delimiters. That means so it will tell you the between the words, all the words are a few words if you want to split them. So make sure the given delimiter is common to all the words in between all the words that, uh, that is available. So that you have to take care. That you have to take care of that. So that, so you can see there, uh, can you observe S4 or uh, no string? Can you observe S4 string? So S4 string is so uh, how many words are there and uh, how it is, you know, uh, splitting that. On what basis it is splitting? Space. Yeah, four. So on what basis it is splitting? Space. Space based, right? It is uh, no space based, it is splitting. So if there is a space, that's my delimiter. So that's my delimiter. So that delimiter, so we are using. So based on that delimiter, so it is splitting and all the words, wherever space is there. So, but I change it here, but uh, there are spaces generally, it is a space. So maybe I was showing different scenario and uh, space, space, there is a space like this. So now all the words in between spaces will be there. 
So now you have to give while well, calling the split method on this string, the maybe space, okay? That's a space, space you have to give. So that space uh, you can provide and you can uh, check that. So on what basis you need to split the string. You have to clearly tell, otherwise it doesn't understand, right? So you have to tell clearly on what basis you want to split. So split that and then, so it will uh, split the words, all the words will go and store in the array. So string array you will get, that's why see square bracket, string square bracket. So here all the words, the wherever space is there, the space before one word, that word will go and store in the array. Again, next word, this one, this will go and store in another space here so next so next this one will go and store in the, the here space is there it will store here next to this one will go and store in the another here so like this you know you will get a so different different values and then which one you want, you get that. For example, I want this one. So how can you get the array element? One. How can you get the array element? Hmm? Index number. Index. index number, right? You have to give index number. Is then the index number you can access the values. So those values we are accessing that, like that only. So, that's the split method, a very useful and widely used method, this one. Okay, I'm just stopping here. Uh, so when we'll meet again.